our next speaker, continuing the European tradition, is here from Italy and also said she's had plenty of coffee this morning as well. So we're uh, really, really excited to have in here Karina from Italy. So welcome in. How, oh, how, how are you? Hello, good morning. Good afternoon, wherever you are. Yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> So, so we've got my morning on the European time slot. We've got uh, the middle of the night, I believe, for America. We've got the evening for Australia. So we, uh, we have some people in the chat before saying, yeah, 48 hour learning streams incoming from everywhere in the world. So again, very excited to have you here as part of .netcom. Um, you are an amazing Microsoft MVP as well. So thank you for that. And today, Karina is going to be talking about cross-platform applications with Xamarin Forms. So I'll hand it over to you. Thank you, Michelle. Okay, so hello again. Uh, maybe during this uh, three days of conference, you've been heard a lot speaking about the uh, summary and summary forms. And now we'll see what uh, it is exactly. So, you know, uh, .NET 5 dropped out. Uh, I mean, just came out. And Xamarin is nothing more than an extension of the .NET platform. Um, it's also a popular mobile development framework uh, that gives you tools and libraries for building your mobile application. So if you have a .NET background, you can go and search for Xamarin form that is open source that will help you build your iOS, Android and Windows application from a single shared code base that we'll see in a couple of minutes. Uh, you can build your pages, layouts uh, from a single API, it can be very extensible for you. Um, now I will go to an overview. So we have Xamarin that it's for us developers with the goal to share the code, uh, the test and the business logic across different platforms. And also, uh, I'm, I mentioned that if you are a .NET developer, your main tool, it's also Visual Studio. So you can leverage everything you have, no matter the underlying technology. And the main importance we have the Xamarin, it's uh, on code sharing. Today, we will be seeing the Xamarin forms that also has uh, the goal to share your user interface and design across different platforms. Um, as I said, uh, Xamarin is open source, and if you are building your application with Xamarin or Xamarin Forms, you have uh, uh, access to a full spectrum of functionalities that are exposed to you by the underlying platform. You can um, access different capabilities like the Bluetooth, the fingerprint, or NFC. You can also integrate uh, uh, different kinds of third party libraries like Google Play Services or Facebook or Google API. You can also bring your favorite native iOS or Android libraries into Xamarin. Another uh, thing that I want to mention is that uh, apps you are bu uh, building using Xamarin will leverage the so called plus platform specific hardware acceleration. So everything you'll be doing will be compiled for native performance. So you won't have any layer between your application and summary. Maybe some other framework uh, can add different kind of layers, but summary won't do that for you. Also your application will perform the so-called full ahead of time compilation that will help you reduce the startup time. So when you're, you're thinking about a mobile application, I think it's very important that uh, your app won't take too much to load, so your user won't drop out uh, after just uh, some seconds. Also, this kind of application are trying to increase the memory um, sharing and improve the overall performance as a native one. I know that I've been speaking uh, um, mainly about iOS and Android application, but uh, with uh, Xamarin Forms, you can create also uh, Windows 10 Universal Windows Platform application, application for television like Samsung, also macOS, 
GTK or WQF application. So you have a variety of platform to choose on. So you can build your idea and use the .NET framework. Now I want to jump in the setup. So if you want to build your application with Visual Studio 2019, you'll need to add this workload, the mobile development with .NET workload. We'll also um, allow you to install the Android SDK. And uh, if you are using Visual Studio for Mac, you'll have something similar there. So the Android and iOS workload, so you'll be ready to start. If you want to create uh, your application that will be targeting both uh, Android and iOS, and if you have a, a Mac that is used for the distribution and building of your iOS application, you can connect to your Mac directly from uh, Visual Studio on your Windows machine. So if uh, the, the computer and your Mac are on the same network, you can uh, pair them and then you have this uh, uh, iOS simulator that will pop up uh, on your Windows machine. I personally prefer to use Windows for development, so this is very handy for me because I can see my uh, iPhone emulating directly on the computer I'm working on. So we saw uh, an overview, something more, let's say, technical. And now I will jump right into the demo. So for the demo, we'll just go and open uh, Visual Studio 2019 and just create the mobile app Summary Forms application. I'll give it a very fancy name here. And once you click Create, Visual Studio will pop up three different templates. So if you are used more maybe to Android application, the first one is the flyout uh, template that will give you a side menu that can be collapsed. Or you can create a tab like here. So you have the navigation on the bottom down the screen. Or if you're brave enough, you can create an empty application with a single screen. OK, so I already created um, a tabbed application here. I hope that you can see it. So once your solution is created, you'll have three different projects. The first one is the share project. This is where you have your pages, uh, like the views. You will have your view model. So it's also important to point out that uh, Xamarin also rely on model to view model pattern. So if you already use it in your .NET application, you can also use it with the Xamarin and the model. Um, so if we see, we we'll also have the Android and iOS application. I mainly use this for the assets. So for example, if I want to have um, an asset for my Android project. You know that Android has different kind of devices with different APIs and also different resolutions. So uh, if you want to target all these devices, you need to add different kind of assets. The same is for iOS there. They have also three different kind of application. I'm not uh, mainly a designer, but there are some online tools that can create you target all these uh, this image here. Okay, so um, as I'm using the tab navigation, the main uh, uh, page is the app shell. So um, with summary for creating your views, you can use um, the extensive markup language. That is a um, declarative markup language that will help you build uh, your views or pages. The first one, uh, thank you, Visa Studio, you're not uh, helping me. But uh, I have also a slide for this, so we can jump here. You can create, uh, as I was saying, a declarative user interface. Um, so everything you'll be creating inside your page, if you are creating some labels, some entries, some text areas, 
or buttons you can create it in this way, but also there is the possibility to create them using G Sharp. So I think it's more how you are used to create. The same uh, if you're using the model view model pattern, uh, which also will give you the data binding and uh, will be better for you to, to maintain it. Let's see. Okay, so the studio just woke up. And this is the, the so called navigation page. You see, you have a tab bar, so the app on uh, button that is in there, with two different pages. Now, if I'm opening the about page, and I want to show you in this, I would call it like a discovery demo. So, this is just a solution this studio um, offers to you. It gives you the about page. That is a very simple page. If you want, you can click here. Okay, so it's a studio. I have the last version, so I need to enable something. But to give you a very nice preview of everything that's here on the page. So, for example, there is a grid inside the page with some uh, stack layout uh, and some information. So everything is created with Xamarin. When speaking about view model, so the binding here, it's uh, the view model. We have also the view model inside here. So for example, we're binding the title and uh, a command that will help you uh, open a URL. Okay, so this is the, the solution that Visual Studio gives to you. You also have different pages here, also a login page that you might recycle for your application. You can also add some items. And I think we can run this application. So here, I will prefer to use the Android target because I have my Android thing connected uh, via USB to the Windows machine. So let's click on play. I'm using visor that will mirror um, my phone to, to the computer. That it's loading here. In the meantime, Visual Studio will uh, build uh, the application for us. So, so this is mainly the template of application we get, you get for free with uh, Visual Studio. We'll install it on the phone. So I already have it here. So we can see it. So we have the about page, a browse page with a list of items. You can add some items here. and save it. So this is the about page we saw. We have the image here, some text, the, the link. And it's already, let me start this. It's already for you, ready to be used as a starting point. You can also here build your services here are some uh, mock services, but you can, of course, uh, build your own. You can change the colors for uh, for your application. You have one here. So I changed uh, the background color to a dark red. You can personalize your application for, from here using a key value result dictionary. And I think this is a nice uh, starting point for an application because may, maybe you already have an idea but you don't know how to start exactly and with this solution you can just sneak around and look for different pages and examples. I will uh, jump back to, to my presentation here. So we spoke about the model view model pattern 
So someone has the built-in support uh, for it. We already saw the data binding, and I think it's very easy for you to use if uh, you're already familiar with it. Now I want to uh, speak about some additional resources that you can use while building your application. There is a library called the Xamarin Essentials. There is the shell pattern that we also saw in the demo. You can also use some platform specific or the material visual. So Xamarin Essential give you a simplified access to the native utilities. So even if there are already very easy to use if you're using this library it's even more um, easy to access something like uh, um, the accelerometers the maps if you want to rely on some sharing capabilities you can do it with the Xamarin extension so uh, uh, this api works with any Xamarin forms application and can be accessed from the main project we saw when we are speaking about uh, Shell also and other additional resources, apart from the menu that we saw, so the bottom menu with the, the big icons, um, Shell also gives you a common navigating experience because in your application you have uh, different pages. We give you also the option to jump between a page and the other. Um, and we give you something like a URA based navigation schema. You can also rely on an integrated search handler. And uh, uh, if you're using Shell that it's built, and um, we also give you an increased rendering speed uh, and we'll also reduce the memory consumption. So um, instead of creating new these components, you can use uh, the existing Shell ones. Uh, another thing that may happen to you if you are targeting both Android and iOS application, it might happen that you want to access something that is only available on a specific platform. You can create the so-called custom renderers. So uh, um, every time from your Xamarin application, you can access native iOS and Android features. But you also can enhance and control on a platform using the so-called platform specific. Um, I mainly use this for fine tuning the user interface because you know that iOS phones are kind of different than Android ones. And you might want to have different kind of uh, uh, spacing between the two platforms. So in this case, in your code, if you're creating a you know, label or something, you can say that on Android uh, will have a margin of 10, for example, and on, on iOS, you want to give it more. And with this tag, you can do it very, very quickly. Another thing that I wanted to point out, if you want to rely on the material visual design that is created by Google. So um, if you like me, you're not more like a designer and want to rely on every on something that it's already in there, you can add uh, this capability in order to have a consistent look and feel across iOS and Android and use this uh, design uh, with Cloud Platform. Also, uh, there are some third-party libraries that can help you build uh, your user interface. I put some things here on, uh, on the slide. And uh, um, I also wanted to point out that uh, there is also the Xamarin Community Toolkit, uh, where the community put their like a big collection of elements for um, Xamarin forms. And uh, you can also try to get inspired by them. They're really cool people. So uh, uh, you can check them on GitHub and also try to find something you can um, reuse in your application. Okay, next, I wanted to point out something about testing, that it's also important. So imagine that you created uh, your application as we saw. So you'll have three different projects, 
the shared one, the Android and iOS, very, very basic. For the unit testing, you can use any unit, X unit, or voice test uh, based on your knowledge. So, mainly also someone informs them. Sapern, the most common uh, .NET unit test framework. But as we, we are in a mobile application, it's important also to, um, to write the so-called UI test. So inside Visual Studio One, so you added the mobile workload application. You'll also be able to create the so-called UI test cross-platform test project. This uh, this project will help you to write UI tests for your mobile application. We also give you the, this readable um, print loop console. So basically, with the UI testing, if you're not familiar with it, you're doing a check on your user interface to ensure that uh, every UI element is on the screen. So, for example, if you have a button on the screen with the UI test, you verify that the button is in there. Of course, you can um, automatize everything on uh, Azure Pipelines. So, you can um, verify your application both from a unit testing point of view and also from a UI test point. If you are interested also in UI tests, you can find something on my GitHub with some examples and uh, some, um, some ideas how you can perform also the UI testing. Okay, if you saw maybe the, the keynote the other day, you know that uh, Xamarin Informs 5 uh, is coming. So I'm very excited to, to test it. If you also want to test it, there's also the preview. But I think maybe you also um, saw something online that uh, uh, from next year with the Xamarin Forms uh, 6, there will be an evolution to the so-called .NET MAUI, so the multi-platform app UI. We'll also uh, give you uh, the possibility, of course, to maintain the cross-platform and native UI capabilities, we will have a single project. You can deploy every time to different devices. With the Maui will be, uh, you have a single stack that will support everything from Android to iOS to macOS and Windows. You'll also have a, so a single uh, project developer experience. And uh, you can have different targets for, uh, for your application. So if you, you want to target different kinds of devices, mobiles, or tablets, you'll easily get this with .NET MAUI. Uh, the code is already on GitHub, so if you want to take a look on there. And uh, you'll have everything to, to get inspired from. So now I think it's time for questions. I imagine there are a lot and uh, I'm happy to answer them. We definitely have a few questions. So let me pull up our, our amazing Twitter board. So thank you everyone who's been sending through the questions as we've been going. So the first one we've got on our tag board here is I'm looking to identify a user in Xamarin Forms app and give authentication access to a web API. Uh, so how can I provide only that user's data and not everything else? Is it identity, is it tokens, things like that? I think you can rely on different kinds of identity providers. You can use also your, your .NET knowledge around identity and uh, I don't know, single sign-on identities, there are a lot you can find there. Alrighty, and now, thank you for that. Um, the next one is, what are some good strategies for handling authentication in Xamarin.Forms applications when you already have a website? 
I also love the fact that they tagged you, which means if we didn't get <laughs> this question, you could totally go and answer it. No, I love it a lot. Yeah, so if you are handling your own authentication, you can create your login screen for your app and rely on the same services you are using on the website. You can also integrate, I don't know, Facebook or Google login. There's some pretty nice example you can find on the Microsoft, uh, I think also on GitHub. So don't worry, everything you already have, you can use it uh, inside your app. Thanks, I'm just having a look through. Few more, and also double checking our chat as well. And Raven Thorn saying, "Yay, my question got asked! Woohoo! Send me the prizes." Um, so if people are actually listening, and we do have a treasure hunt, so if you are on Twitter, uh, sorry Twitch, you should be receiving the link. If you're on uh, YouTube, I'm not sure if it's coming through, but it's .net comp uh, .net slash treasure hunt. And if you answer the questions on there there are a number of prizes that are going out. So definitely go and um, ask those questions there. Um, now let me just have a look to see if we've got a few more coming in for you. It's like, it's slightly slow. Like people ask questions, they come through. But I also <laughs> love the fact that people are tagging our speakers. So continue to tag the speakers because if we don't get to your question, the speakers can go in and answer them once we're done. Um, I don't have any more coming through at the moment, but I have a question for you, and that's what is one of your favorite, most favorite things about Xamarin forums? And I do have another question after that. Yeah, so I like a lot the idea to have this single code share base. You can get really creative in there. So you have everything there, your business logic, your view models, you don't need to create different kind of stuff for Android and iOS. And then with the click, you, you can see uh, your application running in just a few minutes. Uh, you also have the hot restart. So if you're changing something, um, you can save it and you see it right away. Sometimes uh, working with yeah, the designer can so be something very nice. You don't need to rebuild everything. Also, with summary finds, this will also get more and more cool. So, I'm looking forward to that to to see it. Awesome! Thank you so much. Now that's all we have for the moment in terms of questions. But if other people have questions after this, or those people who are watching on the recording afterwards, you can tag Karina and on twitter and it's underscore i believe from what other people have already tagged it's underscore kavrina underscore that's your twitter handle. yeah uh, so feel free to tag kavrina in this and then she'll be able to answer those questions afterwards as well uh so we'll let you get back to your morning and your coffee and thank you so much for tuning in all the way from italy thank you thank you for choosing me and also i wanted to point out i'm also a mentor so if everyone wants to start to summary feel free to reach I know this has been a very introductive stuff, but if you have more specific questions, I'll be happy to help. Amazing. I love that so much. I love the fact when people finish showing, they're like, oh, I'm also here to mentor people. I think it's absolutely brilliant. So thank you again, once again, for being here. And we hope you have a lovely day. Thank you. You too.